Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein, and today we're gonna to talk about how to avoid getting stuck when you start a new business. So over the years, I've had hundreds of clients who were starting a new business, and some of them totally get off the ground and are very successful and make seven figures, and some of them never get off the ground and are stuck and don't even launch any product or service, don't launch the business, nothing ever ends up happening, even though they spent all this time and money. So how do you avoid getting stuck and being in that situation and become one of the business owners who are more successful? Number one, instead of launching your entire product, uh, the entire plan for all your products and services, the software that you're planning to build in the most ultimate way, keep it really small, keep it really simple, and just worry about the minimum viable product or minimum viable service that you can offer. Focus. This is a common statement in the software industry, but it applies to every industry that someone's going to do on their own. If you are launching a bunch of products, if you're planning to launch a bunch of different services, pick one. Pick the most simple thing that you can offer so you can make an offer and see if anyone buys it and see if you like delivering that product or service and see if it works out for you. And then learn from that, make changes and go from there. So often people try to build some penultimate version of their business that they have a vision for being in three, five, 10 years. You wanna start out simple so you can make changes and adjust. This is an experiment. You're not going to be able to think your way into the perfect product or service. You're only gonna be able to create that great product or service with feedback from potential clients and customers. So for example, I have a client who is planning to do a line of clothing and accessories, but instead of launching their entire line of clothing and accessories, they started with tote bags. One line of tote bags. They have multiple ones, but it's just tote bags. It is easy to explain to people. They are more, it's more straightforward to just produce one kind of thing, one category of thing at a time. It actually ends up being easier for trademark applications, but that's a totally a topic for another video. And it means that they can produce those products, offer it, see what the pricing scheme will be, see how they sell, see how the marketing works, get that feedback and expand from there, and then use the money from those sales to expand, to bootstrap themselves. You can do the same thing for services. If you're planning to do launch uh, educational programs for people online, start out with one class. Not some big, huge, giant system that people have to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for. Start out with one Zoom webinar and people just come to that one Zoom webinar, you sell it, it is relatively simple, you can explain what it's gonna be, you can deliver it in one day, and then you go from there and use the money from that to do the next thing. No matter what you're doing, you can find some relatively simple, straightforward version to launch that will be the way for you to get information from the marketplace, from consumers and clients, so you can make changes and launch the rest of your stuff later. The second tip is to keep things in-house to the extent you can. This may seem counterintuitive because a lot of people solve their being stuck problems by delegating stuff out. And sometimes that works for certain things that are not core to your business. You might wanna delegate out your bookkeeping, you know, things like that. But creating your product or service, delivering your product or service, if you hire some other company to write the application that you want to launch or whatever it is. It's going to make it very difficult for you to keep expenses down, for you to change things quickly, for you to pivot what you're doing because you're beholden to someone you hired that's outside. They also have different incentives than you do. I had clients where they spent thousands, tens of thousands of dollars hiring someone to do something, which could be a website, it could be an app, whatever it is. And years later, it's still not done. Now, part of, there's a whole lot of reasons that that could happen and it can be very complicated why it won't work. But part of the problem is, is they can't move quickly. They can't get a minimum viable product out there. They can't make changes. They're stuck with this huge expense 
because they outsourced it all. One of the things you want to do in the beginning is to keep your expenses as low as you can. So it means that you can change things because you're not stuck. You want to have as much control as is reasonable so you can make changes in a quick, dynamic way. And if you outsource everything to some other company, to somebody else, you don't have control over it. It's not a magic pill solution to getting your business off the ground. A lot of times it just creates more headaches. So keep things in-house to the extent possible. And if you do hire someone else to do things, hire them to do relatively small bits instead of the entire business. Tip number three is to stop over-researching. A lot of us who start businesses love learning. We love researching. You're watching this video on YouTube, so you're do doing all kinds of research now. And what can happen is you just do research, seminars, books, videos, all this stuff on the infrastructure of what your business is going to be and then never actually launch because you're stuck in this developmental stage of research. Sometimes we're doing that because we can't decide what to do. So what I recommend is you look at perhaps three different sources to help you figure out that issue. And if you still don't understand what's going on, if you still can't figure out, take a break from that issue and work on one of the other issues in your business because there's gonna be dozens of things you have to figure out to launch a business. There's no point in getting stuck on one of them. Just put it aside for right now, table it for the moment, go work on all the other stuff and come back. Sometimes it'll have worked out in the back of your head. And at that point, if you don't, that's when you might want to hire an expert to give you advice. I'm not talking about full outsourcing. I'm talking about hiring someone in that, that field to consult with you for 30 minutes or an hour, whatever it is, to give you the answer so you can move past it. You want to be able to solve these issues relatively quickly and not spend a huge amount of time over researching. A lot of times people want to get the perfect answer to every question. And that's why they're stuck because there are very few perfect answers to every question. If I had all the perfect answers, I would be a gazillionaire and because I would be able to charge people for all the perfect answers. There is no perfect answer to almost any question. There's just an answer that might work and you try that out and you move on. And that leads us to my fourth point. Assume you're going to be changing things. Assume that you're going to need to pivot. Assume that this is just your first draft of this business. Most likely the products and services you offer in the beginning won't be the things you will be focusing on in a couple years. And it's not bad. It's just the nature of it. The business owners who are successful are the ones who are okay with pivoting, okay, with quitting offering something and moving on to something else. That's not failure. That's just recognizing the data you've gotten back and realizing you need to change things to make more money, to be successful, whatever it is, to save costs even. So often business owners will think that because they've spent all this time and energy and money on something that they can't stop doing that thing and they'll just commit to going down a giant hole. The truth is, is that you need to ignore the sunk costs. You need to ignore the amounts of money that you put into that thing that isn't working and just focus on the future of it. Does it make sense to keep pounding your head against a wall or does it make more sense to pivot and try something different? I think in our culture, we have so many stories of people who have achieved something after a lot of rejections and failure. So we think that that's the way to achieve things. We think that if we get rejected a gazillion times, the last time we'll be accepted and then we'll finally be able to be successful. But that's not necessarily very realistic for most people. You need this business to work so you can make money. You need to change things up so you can be more successful in the future instead of dealing with all that frustration, pounding your head against the wall. Viewing your business as an experiment, like you're a scientist who is running an experiment where you try offering this product or service, you try doing this particular kind of marketing, and you get data back to see, does this work? 
does this kind of marketing and promotion work? These kind of ads work? Do people like this buying this product? People like buying this service? And then you make changes accordingly. Everything's not going to work the first time. Every business is not going to work. You may hate doing the service. It may be something that people want to buy, but you don't enjoy doing that work even infinitesimally. You actually hate doing that work or you don't like the kind of people that show up when you do that kind of marketing or promotion. They're the kind of people who always want refunds. There are many pieces of data you may get back that tell you you need to make a change. So being open to that is going to be very strategic because then you're not expecting to just stick to that one thing and you can make decisions faster. If you know your first decision doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a hypothesis, then you can put that out there and see what happens. And if it works, that's great. If it needs to be tweaked, that's great. If it doesn't work, that's fine because you're going to come up with a new hypothesis for the next thing that you're going to do. And by embracing that change, that willingness to pivot, it's going to help you go faster and remain unstuck. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about what I've said today, feel free to post them in the comments below and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Hit the thumbs up if you found this helpful and subscribe if you like any more tips for small business owners and entrepreneurs. See you next time. Bye-bye.